Hi, this is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk about dreams. You know, we don't talk about dreams much. We don't talk about our dreams much. And you know, we all dream. We all have memories of interesting dreams we've had. In many cases, we have our dreams, and then within minutes, it's flushed from our system. I used to keep a book beside my bed, and I should start this practice again. And every time I would wake up, I would write down what my dream was about, or what my dreams were, or the several dreams that I could recall, because within ten minutes I didn't remember anything. However, in my life I remember a few dreams that stood out crystal clear, and in one case, fifty-five years later, it is still so potent. And I'll get to that in a few moments. Being that I like history and love history, some of my dreams are historical, which is interesting, and I get to meet historic characters. And I've had some very, very strange encounters with historic individuals. I met Thomas Edison strangely. Um, I met Louisa Tetrazzini. Now, that was one of the more unusual dreams. I met um, Astro Boy in the dream. I met a number of people. And uh, I'm sure I will meet a number of other fascinating people in my dreams. Maybe many of you do the same. It's kind of an interesting thing. I can remember the earliest dream I remember was within <clears throat> days of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. I had a dream, and I had a dream as a young kid. Now, I was really shaken with the assassination of the president. He was my hero. And I had this picture on my wall and stuff like that. I even created my own oval office in my bedroom to emulate what he was doing because I found him fascinating. And when my hero was killed, I had a dream, and it's a very naive, childish dream. And I dreamt that I went to the grave of John F. Kennedy. And I put a band-aid on his wound. And he came back to life. And we went to the grave of Abraham Lincoln. And put a band-aid on his wound. And he came back to life. And those were the two I was thinking of at the time, obviously, in the dream. And I was marching down the street with Kennedy and Lincoln. I was very, very proud of myself. And this was all a result of the assassination of the president. And my naive, childlike understandings, which led to that dream. I had a dream about um, Astro Boy. When I was a kid, I had a thing for Astro Boy. I was fascinated by the show. And I, in a dream, met him. And faced him and talked to him and hung out with him. And I still remember that. Pretty amazing as far as I'm concerned. That's got to be 50 years ago. <clears throat> Other dreams have taken place over time. I'm not going to go through them all because it's a lot. But one of the more fascinating, more recent dreams within the last 15 years was I was in a dream. And it's almost like a play, my dream sometimes. Because I was the manager of an opera house. And into my office walked Luisa Tetrazzini. Big, heavy. Um, ace bandages on her legs. 
And on my desk, I had a recording of Enrico Caruso. And she hobbled over to my desk and picked up the record and kissed it. And she said, dead, ten years. So I knew the dream was taking place in 1931. Kind of interesting. I've had other dreams like that. And I bet you have as well. It's interesting how our psyche takes us to realms in which we could hardly believe and allows us to explore and understand a lot of things that are of our immediate uh, use, conversation, uh, knowledge, and that all becomes part of our dreams. What dreams have you had? I bet you had some fascinating ones. You should share them. I'd like to hear them. And uh, I try to encourage as many dreams as I can have. Because I find them a fascinating moment. And, and you travel. You see. You do things. <laughs> and if I may end with this whole thing saying, things that you could only dream of. <laughs> and that's true. I mean, in dreams, you do things that are absolutely incredible. If life could only follow our dreams, think where the world would be. Thank you.